grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The heading of chapter 3 in the Lutheran Study Bible of Lamentations reads as follows. Great is your faithfulness, echoing Jeremiah's proclamation and confession led by the Holy Spirit in verse 23. Jeremiah makes this proclamation and confession because he, as a prophet of God, had been given God's word, both law and gospel, to proclaim to God's people. And Jeremiah, having witnessed God's word in action, was convinced that God is faithful to both because God speaks two words, law and gospel. Jeremiah was also convinced that God was faithful to those who fear, love, and trust him, which he had witnessed as well. And these are the two points that I want to proclaim today, God's faithfulness to his word and God's faithfulness to those who fear, love, and trust him. Because these apply directly to you today. Because you know that God speaks law and gospel to you for your own good. You know that God is faithful to both because you have witnessed his word and his actions in your life. You know that God is faithful to those who fear, love, and trust him as all of you do because this is what the, God has revealed in the scriptures and what you have been taught in your confirmation. And it is the ongoing preaching, teaching, and proclamation of his word by the called and ordained servants in this church. Jeremiah teaches us that the preaching of the law has its purpose, and that purpose is to cause his readers, I mean his hearers, excuse me, to repent and confess their sins and return to God. And that the gospel has its purpose, to cause his hearers to believe that God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and always standing ready to forgive. And at the heart of Jeremiah's lament, are the things that I have just mentioned. But for us to see the fullness of Jeremiah's lament, and a lament is nothing but a prayer expressing great sorrow and pain. We have to examine what happened to Jeremiah to be lamenting in the way that he was, and why he proclaimed God's faithfulness to his word and God's faithfulness to his people. In 586 BC, the people of Judah in the southern kingdom were taken into exile by Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. The temple in Jerusalem was destroyed and many of the holy things were carried away to Babylon. Jerusalem, which was once a great city, was now in ruins. And Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, was lamenting with great sorrow and pain over these circumstances. If you go back to the book of Jeremiah in chapter 25, Jeremiah told God's people, God is going to send you into exile for 70 years for your sinning ways, your apostasy, and for their lack of repentance. And Jeremiah said this, that God was right to do this. In other words, God was being faithful to his word of the law spoken to his people. God had given his law to his people with the intent that they would repent and return to him. But they refused to listen. They refused to confess their sins. They refused to turn away from their sinful ways. So God did what he told them he would do. Sent them in the exile. They deserved it. When Jeremiah then gave them the law, he also added the gospel that God at the end of 70 years would return to get his people. And God who is faithful to his word of the gospel and being faithful to his people at the end of 70 years did exactly what he said. He brought them out of exile and punished the Babylonians. So saints, as we hear all this, what are we to learn from Jeremiah? How does he help us to understand God's faithfulness to his word and God's faithfulness to those who fear, love, and trust him? Jeremiah teaches us that when lamenting over the hard things in life, and who doesn't go through hard things in life? Is it easy? Life's tough, isn't it? But, but I can see all of you, you all look pretty happy. 
no toughness? Oh my gosh. Am I in the right church? <laughs> okay. All right. When things are dark in our lives, when, thing, when life seems to be getting the best of us, and we cry out to God for help, and when it seems that God isn't responding in the time or in the way you want him to, do, ever, do any of you feel that way sometimes? I, I think that might be a common response sometimes. We want God to okay, God, get on the job, you know? Like, do it now. And then he doesn't do it right now. Well, Jeremiah teaches us this, to remain faithful and to wait on the Lord and to trust that God will answer our prayers according to his good and gracious will, as he has promised that he would. This is good news for you that God will answer your prayers according to his good and gracious will. Because as our loving and faithful father, he knows what's best for you, his child. So let us do as Jeremiah, remain faithful, remain steadfast in the one true faith. God will answer your prayer according to his good and gracious will. And it will be right for you. Saints, let us keep in mind like God's chosen people then, who were in exile. We are in exile here today, in this world in which we live in, because we are apart from God, uh, away from our true home, which is in heaven. We are aliens and strangers here, until our Lord returns to get us. And remember, this is a promise, and God is faithful to his promises, and we can rest assured that he will do exactly what he said. He will return to get us and take us out of this valley of tears into his heavenly bliss. And the resurrection of Jesus is the proof that this will happen. Because he is risen, you will rise. And this is a promise to each and every one of us who stands firm in the one true faith. Faith in the word of God. Faith in the word of God made flesh Jesus Christ. Each Sunday in your divine service, you witness the faithfulness of God's word to you. Confession and absolution. You confess your sin, and what does God do? He grants the absolution. He forgives your sins. In the Kyrie, you ask for mercy. God gives mercy. Just think about when you come to the table a little later. God's faithful word is there for you. As you partake of the body and blood of your Lord, you receive the promise of forgiveness of your sins. Just think, in your baptism, your sins are forgiven by the faithful word attached to the water. And you are given a great gift that no one can give to you other than your Lord and your God. He gives you the great gift of the Holy Spirit. You have it by the mercy and the grace of Almighty God. Saints, I think you all know that it is abundantly clear throughout Scripture that God is faithful to his word and faithful to those who fear, love, and trust him just as all of you sitting here do. Bottom line, God is a faithful and loving Father to each and every one of you who believe and confess his name. Saints, we are going to sing a hymn at the communion time, one of my favorite hymns. I hope you all embrace this hymn as well. It's called Great as Thy Faithfulness, hymn 809. And I like to close the sermon with the refrain because the refrain, the very last word in the refrain is, hold on to the very last word in the refrain. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand has provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. This great faithfulness, God, is directed to you. He gives his word to you and he's faithful to his word. 
He's faithful to those who fear, love, and trust him, who stand firm in the one true faith. This one and only true God will be faithful to you until you take your last breath. And he will take you to live with him in the new heaven and in the new earth. And as I used to say, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever, if you want to join me, ever and 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 ever. I cannot stop because how long are we going to live with him? For eternity. Amen. May the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen.